Hello everyone, uh, I'm Idan. I work, for, I work for the JP Morgan. Uh, I'm a data scientist and a machine learning engineer. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then we, we jump uh, right in to the topic, uh, we, which is uh, model explainability. So uh, before the, uh, JP Morgan, I worked for uh, a BI, which is a, a fintech startup. I was a data science lead, uh, lead there and uh, we did uh, credit scoring uh, using machine learning. Uh, before that, uh, I did various uh, software roles. Um, some were engineering, some were um, managerial. And um, I come from uh, a software background and I've been doing data science and machine learning for the past uh, five years. Um, so today we, we're talking about model explainability. And, and when we say explainability, uh, it's not, not clear what it is exactly. Uh, it could be understanding how the model is created or uh, how it uses data to make predictions. Um, but let, let me start with, with a question. Um, in, in your estimate, how many machine learning or any other models have made decisions that affected your life this week, uh, if you had to, to, to guess? So, I see hands. Yeah? No, if you have to, if you had to, to guess how many, a lot, <laughs> right? So I I don't have a, a good estimate too, uh, but um, if you drove here with, with Waze, uh, you're using uh, your uh, smartphone keyboard with predictive typing. You use uh, your your spam free email. You watch Netflix and uh, let it suggest you uh, what uh, movie or uh, series uh, TV series to watch next. Then you are affected by, by machine learning models, but. Not all models are alike. Uh, maybe it's less important to understand how uh, predictive typing is working, uh, comparing to a model that uh, suggests medical treatment or, uh, or a model that help uh, legal uh, attorneys and, uh, and judges and um, also uh, credit scoring. You come to the bank and you apply for a home loan and the bank rep uh, tells you you're rejected. And you ask why, he says, I don't know, the, the model says so. Uh, is it acceptable? Uh, should you live with, with uh, the model's decision that you're not eligible for a, a loan? So the, the clear-cut answer is no. Uh, it, it is not acceptable. Uh, and the, the bank is, uh, has legal obligation to explain exactly why the model gave this prediction. Uh, but there are other cases uh, where there's no legal uh, obligation and you still might want to know uh, why and how the, the model uh, got to this uh, result. Um, so let's jump to, to another example. Uh, let's say you're a data scientist or there's a company that asked uh, her data scientist to, to build a model that predicts uh, if a candidate would be still employed uh, more than two years from now. So she she go ahead she goes ahead and takes the historical data and build a a model, and then the hiring manager asks her, uh, okay, l first of all explain me how the model the model uses the data to make the predictions, and it turns out the model uses uses the gender uh, more than more than any other feature. And not, not only that, uh, the model uh, clearly uh, prefers men over me women. So then the hiring manager w w might say, uh, this model is discriminative and you cannot use it. And the data scientist, if she, she, does, she has done the work uh, properly, she, she might say, well, that's what the data suggests. Uh, I trained it, I tested it, it works. Uh, I don't see what what's what the, the the issue here, and uh, to prove it, I can remove this uh, this gender uh, feature, and you see that the model performance declines. So is she right? No, she, she she's wrong. Uh, she's definitely wrong, and there are many uh, uh, false underlying assumptions here. Uh, she, she assumes, first of all, that she has no bias, or she or he, it doesn't matter, uh, has no, no bias, and everyone has biases. 
uh, there's there's no one who some of some of them you, you you're aware of, but some uh, you're not even aware that that you're biased. Uh, also, data data is not complete. It, it is never complete. It never represents the the real world, uh, whatever it is, and and the data since it was collected in this company might represent the biases that were in the, the company to begin with, uh, if the company preferred men over women. So even though there's no legal obligation, well, maybe there is also in this case, but uh, you still uh, might want to know why and how the model uh, got to, to his, uh, its conclusion. So um, how can we explain a model? When I say explain, do I mean uh, if it was a neural net to define exactly uh, which uh, type of uh, activation function we have, what type of neurons, how many, how many layers, something else. Uh, so actually knowing how the model was trained uh, is not that important because let's say you have two separate models that were, one was trained with neural nets and the other was trained with uh, boosted trees and they give the, the exact same results. And, and a model is, is a function you, you all are aware of. Uh, it just maps input to output. And if the two different models give the same mapping, then it doesn't matter how they, they were built. So we're not, interesting. Uh, we're not interested in that. We're interested in how the model interprets the data and how it maps it to, to the output. And there are two main uh, ways to, to interpret the model uh, one is global and other is local. Uh, and global is is uh, is uh, how the model generally uh, treats the data. Uh, so if we go back to the example that I gave uh, on, on the 80% gender, uh, that's a global explanation. And a local explanation is something that explains a specific prediction. Like if uh, main uh, um, uh, someone ca came for a home loan and was rejected and want to know exactly why, that would be a local explanation. And we need both, uh, both uh, for regulation reasons and for uh, uh, development reasons. Uh, so if a, a way to, to interpret, it, there are many ways to interpret models. Uh, it, it is becoming more and more important over the years. And one of them, the one that we are uh, going to uh, focus uh, today is uh, SHAP or uh, Shapely Additive Explanation. And SHAP is actually another model uh, that uh, you train to explain the original model. And, and if, if that, is, that is a little bit confusing, we'll get into that. But you take the data, you take the original model, and you feed both of them into the, the SHAP. And you train it. You train the SHAP model. And then after you've trained it, it can, uh, it, it can generate uh, both a global uh, explanation and a local explanation. So each prediction, you could explain it, and also globally. And we'll see how, how it works. If it is a little bit confusing uh, to train a model to explain another model, uh, and you might ask who is explaining the, the sharp model. So a good analogy for that is a psychologist that treats a patient, he doesn't know exactly how the neurons in the patient's uh, brain are interconnected, but uh, through conversation and questions, the psychologist might, uh, might uh, understand how the patient makes uh, his decisions, and he might be able to explain that uh, in a f fair amount of, of accuracy. Uh, so in this analogy, the, the, the shop is the psychologist and the patient is the original model. And like I said, there are many uh, different methods to, to explain a model. Um, so SHAP is, is gaining a lot of uh, popularity uh, in, in the past years uh, for a good reason. It, it works good and it, it can uh, interpret uh, and explain any kind of model, uh, not just uh, neural nets or linear or uh, trees. And you might heard of, of Lime and other met methods here. Lime is uh, sort of uh, like a Taylor series. If, if you remember that from uh, calculus, it, it uh, do, does an uh, uh, approximation of the model in the, the prediction to, uh, to explain it. And the, the approximation is a model that is easy to explain, like a li linear model. 
but Chap gives you both of them, and in many cases it does it uh, in, in a, a fast way. So, Shap is, Shapley uh, was a, a mathematician that uh, introduced this uh, um, method for multiplayer game, and you know, there's no data talk without a good sum, good old sum, but we don't need to go into all the details here. They don't, they don't matter too much. The only thing that matters here is we want to explain each feature. So this uh, PI is uh, a feature, and to understand how it contributes to the model, we need to average its contribution over all, all the different uh, subsets of features because there are uh, also uh, dependencies between different features. So we need to see how it works with all the rest of the features in all the different subsets and then average the, this, uh, this contribution. And it works, uh, uh, it, it is very accurate if you do it uh, for enough uh, examples. Which models are supported by SHAP? So, li like mentioned, uh, you can use the kernel explainer, which will explain any different model uh, that you have. Um, but since this might be uh, computationally expensive, because you have to calculate to all the different subsets, you might want to use a dedicated uh, shop exp uh, explainer like tree, deep learning, uh, boosting, and linear explainer, which are faster, and they are uh, implemented for uh, uh, several uh, known packages. And we'll see an, an example for that uh, in, in a few slides. Th there's a, a good Python library for SHAP, uh, and it, it is easy to install, just uh, you can use pip or, or a conda to install it. And we will see how to use it to explain a model. Um, so let me switch to a Jupyter notebook so that we can, all right, so we won't focus on building the model because this, this is not our main focus here. We want to explain it, but just to give you a, a context, this is a model that was trained on uh, census uh, income uh, that predicts if a person would make uh, a, a yearly income of more than 50K. Uh, so it has both uh, financial and, and personal uh, data, and it uses that to do the, the prediction. So we're gonna glance over all the um, model uh, training. and go right to the explanation. So in, in this point, you have a model. Either you built it or you got it for someone else. It doesn't matter. Uh, but your, your job is to explain it, explain how it works, both globally and locally. And w we've established that, that it is worth explaining. Either you have to uh, due to legal reasons or you want to, due to moral or even development. You want to find out uh, your own biases. So to train the SHAP map model, the psychologist, you need to take the original model, which is right here, and you need to take the data that you want to explain, which is right here, and you get the SHAP values. Now, SHAP values are the ones that uh, you get from this, this sum that we saw a couple of slides back, and if you just look at the SHAP values, uh, it might not tell you uh, uh, too much, uh, but we can try to interpret that before we uh, move to visualizations, which will make it uh, much easier. So let's see, uh, this first, uh, every war row here is a person in the original data set. And every column is the shaft value for this prediction. So the, the first feature got this value uh, for this person. And as you can see, it got different values for different person. So how could it be that one feature got different values? <coughs> well, um, that's because there are uh, dependencies between features. So it might uh, had a bigger impact on, on one sample and, uh, and a smaller one on a different sample. So 
All right, we have the shaft values. Now we try to visualize them. So we take one row and we make a prediction with a model. That's the prediction, that's the model confidence that this person would make over 50K uh, this year. All right, so now we're trying to explain how it got to this uh, conclusion. So we take the, the shaft values from the shaft model and we plot them. And what we see here is there are several features that uh, push the results up, meaning uh, it is more likely that this person would make more than 50K, and other features pu push it down. So he's uh, over 50, uh, married, uh, fairly educated, and was a, a exec manager. Uh, and uh, but uh, on the other end, uh, he works uh, 30 hours per week, uh, and he's uh, self-employed. So he got a total score of uh, 34, uh, which is uh, exactly uh, or very similar to what we saw here. So as you can see, the sharp uh, calculation is uh, very precise and gives you the, the same uh, results, but with the explanation how the model got to these results. So that is a local explanation. If that was a, a person uh, applying for a home loan, we would be able to explain him exactly uh, what uh, drove us to make this decision or, or another. Uh, we can also visualize many different prediction, predictions at once. This is still local, but uh, if we want to see uh, how the different results vary over all, uh, different samples, we can see it here. So in the x-axis, every dot is a person. And y is the shape value, and the colors here are what drove it down or up. Uh, and for each uh, row, we, we see the, the most uh, prominent uh, feature. Uh, so here we can see that uh, the, the youngsters uh, probably make uh, less than 50K a year. And this is an old data set, maybe, uh, you know, the 50K uh, is not representative, but uh, see, we see her uh, younger age, and here we see more uh, educated and older persons, so it looks, uh, makes sense. So let's move on to global explanation. And this is also important to understand how generally the model uses the data to make predictions. Okay, so we were running out of time, but uh, we covered uh, almost everything. So a global explanation. Here we can see in the uh, vertical uh, axis, the higher the, the feature, the, mo the more prominent it is. So relationship is more important than capital gain, but it is also interesting, interesting to see that for capital gain, most of the samples, uh, it had no, no effect over most of the samples uh, because uh, it, they got zero SHAP value. But for the ones that uh, it did affect, it had huge effect. Uh, and w when we compare it to a relationship, relationship is, is the, pr turns out to be the, the, the most important uh, feature, but it had uh, only marginal effect on, on, on over the samples. Uh, but it affected almost all the samples. All, um, almost none of them got zero uh, for a relationship. Another interesting uh, plot is dependency. So as we know, uh, features uh, depend on one another. Let me try to zoom out a little bit. Can you still see it? All right. So. For someone who is uh, 50 years old, um, you get different shaft values. So it's not enough to be uh, uh, at a certain age. Uh, so in this plot, we plot the age versus education. So it looks like uh, if you're older and well-educated, you're most, uh, more likely to, to make uh, more than 50K a year. Uh, so the, and if we plotted it against another uh, uh, feature, we might get different colors here, but that's a dependency plot of age. And another example for categorical uh, 
feature. So that is the work class, or uh, if you're a sample self-employed, or full uh, full job, or a part-time job. So we uh, we can see that uh, the self-employed, uh, for them, it it is uh, it is reversed. Uh, there's a lot of dependency in other uh, other features, but for education, we see that the non-educated self-employed uh, are making more money. This is probably the entrepreneurs, uh, self-taught uh, type of people that uh, knows how to make money w without uh, formal education, and it, is, it shows in the data. By the way, it, it doesn't mean that the model is correct. It just interprets uh, why the model gave the, the prediction. Uh, so there are other examples. We will uh, not go into them, but one thing that I do want to show before we conclude uh, is that you can restrict the model to have no dependency bet between uh, different features if you uh, limit the number of leaves for each tree. And in that case, the dependency graph changes a lot. So the same graph that we saw before, age, now we have no vertical uh, lines here. So if you are uh, age 40, you have just one chef value because there are no dependencies. Uh, all right, uh, we can see other examples, but uh, any quick questions before uh, I hand it off to Yoav? Yeah. So the question was, what happens when the model has a very uh, low confidence uh, of their results? Uh, well, it means that maybe the original model is not that good and you won't, it won't be used uh, to begin with. Uh, a good model gives you different results and this is the, the model that you want to interpret uh, eventually. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. So I'm not sure I got the question right. Uh, do, do you have more time? Uh, you ask if you can train the shaft model before the original model? Is it with? Uh, no. You, yeah. So th th there's a. Um, you, you can certainly do that, and that's what the Sharp Library does for the uh, specialized. Uh, you have the kernel explainer that, that you have to use only after the model was trained, but the uh, specific Sharp uh, models like uh, uh, deep learning and uh, linear are trained with, with with the original model. So yeah, you could do that. All right, uh, that's all the time we have. Thank you.